Welcome to the All About You podcast. My name is Sheila and I am your host. In this podcast, I invite people to tell their stories of their travels, hobbies and passions. These podcasts are also now available on my All About You YouTube channel. So if you have a story to tell, please contact me on all about you podcast at yahoo.com and let's tell your story. Welcome to the All About You podcast and my guest today is Melina who is a singer, songwriter and producer from Kansas City in the US. She came to Valencia to study at the Berklee College of Music and she graduated in 2019 and has been living in sunny Valencia ever since and this is her story. So, Melina, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. Well, Melina, I'm really happy to have you here because I've been trying to get somebody from the Berklee School of Music for over a year. We met at a concert that you were singing in about three yes. weeks ago now, mm -hmm. and I approached you about being a guest on the podcast, and you agreed. Yes, of course. Especially if you're talking about Berklee College of Music. I mean, I love school that I went to and yeah we can talk about it all <laughs> perfect right so let's go back a few years then so you're a singer songwriter and producer so when you were a kid was music a big influence in your life yes absolutely wow my mom got me into music kind of as soon as she could it's always been a part of my life I think when I was five years old I started uh, piano lessons and then in second grade, maybe around eight years old, then my mom put me in voice lessons. And I also started all kinds of different dance classes, um, was really into musical theater, started doing shows, yeah, literally as, as, soon, as soon as I could, um, all throughout middle school and high school until I graduated. I started writing songs sometime in high school, like making my own music. Yeah, and then it just kind of the one track that I had, there was... I didn't really consider anything else, it was just like music has, has always been what I do. And so the, I went to university in Nashville, Tennessee for music. I studied commercial voice and music business as well. Um, and then that eventually led me to my master's here at, at Berkeley College of Music in Valencia. So your mum really put you on a path with singing, dancing, acting, that was amazing. Yeah. Yes, all of it. I think the way she tells the story is that I would come home um, from preschool singing all the songs and yeah, and she noticed that I could maybe sing a little. And so, you know, you see a little kid that's, that's good at one thing, you just like, okay, let's go for it. You know, we want her to excel. So it was very supportive of my parents to do that. A lot of your free time was spent going to various classes of one kind or another. Oh yes, she kept me very busy, my mother. <laughs> I do think for kids to get involved in singing or dancing or acting is great. I mean, it's a social thing, it's good fun, you meet in other people. So I think that is a great opportunity if, if you can do something like that. Oh yeah, I think there's a, a lot to learn more than just music, you know, building confidence. Yeah, getting out of your shell. I think music has a lot more benefits than you know outside of just music so let's talk about the system of getting into the berkeley school of music did you have to audition and fill in a mountain of forms yes yes of course this was four and a half years ago now that i did that i guess yeah but of course it was a lot of essays and what a long application process and i had an audition i remember on online because the school is is here in spain so most of the auditions are online for that for the school actually so i was in nashville just on skype i think yeah with my former professors now yeah it seemed crazy to me to apply to a school in europe i had i never really imagined that for myself before that and i got in it felt like a dream i cried leaving Nashville. I was so scared and excited at the same time. Um, and I just fell in love with Valencia so much that now I've never left. <laughs> I mean, spending time in Nashville, I mean, that that is the home of music. What yes. was that like? Music City. Nashville was awesome. I loved uh, my undergrad at Belmont University. I loved that school as well. It was an amazing time. And I mean, yeah, kind of like, I don't know, New York or LA, like you go into a coffee shop, your barista is bound to be a songwriter or a musician of some sort. 
it's just everyone everywhere is involved in the industry. So it was fun to be, I mean, an awesome experience to be really just surrounded by it all the time and a pretty big school too. And everyone there is shooting for the music business, good and bad, you know, because that also means there's a ton of competition in that city. So I also liked coming to Berkeley here was very different in that it's a much smaller school. There's a couple hundred students total in the campus here. Yeah, so it was a totally different experience. And in Nashville, I kind of felt like I was one one in a million of singer-songwriter, like the genre, the kind of music that I make. I was surrounded by a lot of people and students who did the exact same thing as me. But here, I feel a little more unique, I guess, so it's not the right word, but here in Valencia, on a much smaller campus, I feel like I kind of have more more to offer. There aren't so many people just like me here, like a, a singer-songwriter from the U.S. And Berkeley College has students from all around the world. You can find, like, in that small little school, you can find, like, every kind of genre of music and musician and crazy instruments. I mean, we are incredibly lucky here because the Berkeley School of Music has just celebrated its 10th anniversary. Yes. Which is crazy because I remember when Berkeley first came here and none of us could really understand that international students from all over the world, and they are absolutely all over the world, come to somewhere like Valencia. I mean, (laughs) the facilities you've got, I've never been inside, but where the building is down at the City of Science area, looks absolutely amazing. It must be absolutely brilliant for students to come and spend time studying at the Berkeley School, but in a city like Valencia, you've got the beach, you've got the historic. Mm -hmm. So what was your experience? I mean, for you coming from Nashville to Valencia, had you been to Spain before? No, I hadn't. I came to Valencia right after I got into the school. I found out I was admitted into the program. Me and my mom took a trip over here to check out the city. And me being her little baby girl, she didn't want me to move all the way, you know, across an ocean to some place that she'd never been. So her and I took a trip, took a trip here, checked out different neighborhoods and the school and decided um, where I would like to live. Uh, yeah, that was my my first time ever in Spain. Yeah, and it is crazy that there. I think it's like crazy and and awesome that Berkeley decided to put a campus here because Valencia really isn't some huge music city. There is a lot of music here, you know, but it's it's no Boston, New York, and they've kind of like created this whole music city for themselves. Um, I think a lot of Berkeley, more more and more Berkeley students are sticking around Valencia, so I think it's just gonna keep growing and growing like because Berkeley has planted that seed here, which I think is awesome. I mean, we are incredibly lucky, particularly during the summer here, because the amount of free concerts the Berkeley School put on is just phenomenal. I mean, I've been to a couple this year. Quality of of the musicians, the stage production, it is phenomenal. And even that has grown over the years. You know, we've seen the difference in how the concerts have got bigger. They've had to change the location. Still oh, down yeah. by the college, but they've had to move it to a different area just to accommodate all the people. Mm-hmm. So you can go down there, take your chair, take your picnic blanket, take your picnic, a good bottle of wine. And the quality of music is, is just phenomenal. And it's all genres. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just not pop. It's not just, you know, ethnic music. It's not just rock opera it's everything it's incredible so let's talk about your time at Berkeley then so we're we're turning the clock back sort of over four years now yes what was your first impression when you went to the school well like I said it, it was so different from Nashville in that it was way more diverse um I had never worked with musicians from like so many different countries. And it was so often like in a classroom or in a band setting, I would look around and be like in a group of five, seven musicians in a band and be like, I'm the only American in this in this room. I would look around and see, wow, every single instrumentalist, every musician in this room is from a different country and does totally different music. And right now we're all gonna make one song together. That was like, one of the coolest parts. What else? Berkeley also gave me this, I I say now that I am a producer and and I wasn't able to say that before coming to Berkeley College. Yeah, so at Berkeley, I really focused hard on on becoming self-produced and yeah, learning that side of things myself, learning how to engineer in the studio. And now that's what I do full time pretty much because of Berkeley. So really thankful for 
all that I learned. Let's talk about songwriting. How do you go about writing a song? People always ask like what comes first really, the, the lyrics or the melody. I kind of write them both at the same time. I like to start out with some sort of idea. I like to, to start out with the hook, the hook of the song, which is usually like the title or, you know, the main little thing that should stick in your mind after the song is over. In order to write a good song, I want to say something that's never been said before, which is difficult because usually, you know, most songs that I write at least are love songs or breakup songs. There's been millions of those, but you want to say it in a, in a way that sounds fresh. So usually I try to start with that main idea and hook of the song. Go from there. What really helps me is to have a song that I'm like loving at the moment from a different artist and say like, I want to write a song like that. I want to write a song with this groove or with this energy and be inspired by another piece of music to start writing my own. How long roughly would it take you from start to finish to write a song? Or do you have several songs on the go at the same time? Yeah, wow. I wish it was um, yeah easy enough to set like a, a certain amount of time. I'll, like some songs, I've written a song and in, in an hour before I've... Uh, written a song that took like three years before of <laughs> you know going back and and changing little things and totally depends some some songs a lot of songwriters say it just wrote itself and I think that's really true for a lot of things sometimes you'll have an idea and it just like falls out and you're like wow that song just needed to be written and it and it happened so quickly um, and other ones take a little bit of time I think it's really interesting if we talk about writing there's 26 letters in, in the standard <laughs> alphabet. And you think of how many songs and poems and books have been written. Mm -hmm. And I have no idea how many notes there are because I'm not a musician. And you think of how many songs have been written, different types, different genres. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. phenomenal, isn't it? The world of singing and writing, when you've got a limited number of letters or notes but you can create so many different stories and, and songs are stories, mm -hmm. you know, and particularly stories about love and everybody's breakup is different. And they always say the best songs are written with the broken hearts, which in a way is sad, but sometimes when you do have a breakup, I guess to help that grieving process, you want to go through all those broken heart songs. Yes. I so agree with that. Uh, maybe it's true, at least for me, because songwriting is so therapeutic and it's sometimes it's hard to write a happy song because if I'm happy, maybe I just want to go to the beach here in Valencia, you know, but sometimes when there's deeper emotions like sadness, grief, you know, then you kind of want to focus inward. And for me, so yeah, songwriting can be very therapeutic in that way to get out feelings in a song. So yeah, I would say sometimes some of the the better songs or more honest songs come from a, a sadder place sometimes. The thing is with music, it is so connected to emotions. When we're happy, we're probably going to put a really upbeat, banging tune on and we're going to, you know, do our thing in the kitchen. And then maybe when you're feeling, you know, you need a bit of downtime, time to recharge, you might want a bit of classical music. The connection between emotion and music is just phenomenal. And I think this is why it's so important with therapy for people. Yeah, true. You know, we've talked about, you know, you've got a broken heart, you're going to listen to the broken heart songs. But even scientists are saying, if somebody is seriously ill, give them the music. They might not be able to speak. But they're saying the brain will be able to respond to that music. Absolutely. Music therapy is a huge thing. I, I've thought about going into that before. I think it's fascinating. And yeah, I'd love to, to study and know more about music therapy. You just reminded me in middle school, mostly maybe a little bit of high school to like get performance experience. I used to sing at a ton of nursing homes around my little suburban town outside of Kansas City. There was a few years I was singing, I think I was singing at three, three, four, maybe five nursing homes a month, like maybe once a week or something. And I would sing like an hour set, just me, like karaoke tracks. <laughs> but it was a great experience for what, a, a 10, 12 year old, uh, just to be in front of an audience and 
one of the nursing homes my grandfather was in, which I think was how this started. Yeah, but like you said, there's this crazy connection with music and so many of the these patients in the nursing home like that were nonverbal and really close to their last days. And then I would sing a song that they love and they'd start singing along. This would be someone that, yeah, that wasn't able to to speak usually. And they would remember these lyrics and crazy things like that. Or, or a patient that just like always had their eyes closed, looked so upset and and I'd sing a really old song and you just kind of see them relax a little bit or, or open their eyes for the first time in a week. And same for my, my grandfather would do the same. So it's really a beautiful, awesome thing. To be able to do something like that, Milana, is just phenomenal because the power of music, to you, it might be a song that you don't particularly like, but you know it's going to work really well with, with the group of people you've got. We've all been in the circumstances where we hear a piece of music and maybe it doesn't have any personal meaning to us, but it just brings you to tears. It could be strings, or it could be some rocky thing just gets you in the heart at that particular moment. I mean, the power of music is just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about music production. What exactly does that mean? So, music production, being a producer can mean so many different things. Being a producer, like in the studio, can sometimes just mean that you're like, bringing your your vibe and your presence in the studio and kind of like giving your opinion and telling the the uh the musicians like what direction to take this but also kind of more in a in a modern electronic age being a producer can also mean like just making the music yourself in the computer which is which is what I do every day yeah i write more more in the pop genre and when i say i produce my own music it's me in in ableton on my computer and you can make all kinds of sounds with just a keyboard and my guitar ukulele and i just record everything myself sometimes ask friends to like to make tracks and i'll and i'll layer it and i also have i have like a little vocal studio in my room and i record all my own vocals and and edit everything myself yeah so i can kind of make a finished product of music from my bedroom, which is very fun and um, self-sufficient, I guess. <laughs> I mean, this is just phenomenal, isn't it? I mean, I'm pretty sure I've told this story before. One of my favourite artists is Carly Bono, the Australian singer. Just pure pop. Love it, love it, love it. And she was in the middle of doing a new album during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And she, like the rest of us, didn't know how long it was going to go on for. And basically, she finished her album in her house with a duvet over her head <laughs> in her wardrobe. She basically ordered who, all her gear off of Amazon and with the help over the phone and through Skype with her sort of musical team, they talked her through setting it all up and she finished her album doing that, which I thought was phenomenal. But as you said now, with technology on your computer, you can create the backing tracks, you can bring in all the musical instruments. I mean, that, that's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it, it's so much fun. And I, I had a similar experience, I guess, in the pandemic. I mean, I was already learning how to produce a bit, but the pandemic really speeded it up for me. And and I would make most of my music at Berkeley and use their facilities and their instruments and everything. But in the pandemic, obviously, we're all at home. And the first thing I did, like that first day they announced a shutdown, I what I what did I do? I ordered a, a microphone, a cable, a keyboard. I got like monitor speakers and set up a little studio in, in my house. I found a, a mattress we weren't using, put it up against the wall. There's my vocal booth. Yeah. And then what did I do in all my free time? I made a bunch of music and got a lot better at producing. So yeah, really, really similar experience. I think that a lot of musicians too had that experience. They just were hungry for music and also bored. So why not get better at, at what we love to do? This is the interesting thing, isn't it? We've come through the pandemic and yes, it was, it was a terrible experience and a lot of people lost their lives. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it was you know all positive yeah of course totally not but as you say a lot of us were pushed forward a good i think you know four or five years we all had to get you know a bit more of a grasp on technology whether it was just using skype or zoom for work and stuff 
And it really has pushed a lot of people further into the future. A lot of projects escalated incredibly fast mm -hmm. because of the pandemic. So that experience of you going, okay, right, I'm going to turn this into a positive, and you just got on there, ordered all your gear, and, mm -hmm. and you flew. So you spent, we were actually in, in the lockdown here for 12 weeks here in Valencia. So where are you putting your music? Where can people find your music if you've got a YouTube channel or a website? Yeah, yeah, I have a website, melinamarchese.com. And I have a few songs, a few songs on Spotify. Um, I haven't released anything in the last couple of years. And the music that I made in the pandemic, actually, I've been putting it off and off and I keep saying I'm about to release it. I swear I'm about to release it. <laughs> yeah, but I, I haven't released anything recently. I have been, in the last year and a half, I've been focusing more on the songwriting and production side rather than on my own music and artistry. And I've been, yeah, writing and producing freelance on all kinds of different projects and that has what is what has been keeping me busy lately, uh, yeah. So we talked before we started the podcast you graduated a couple of years ago, but you decided to stay in Valencia. Mm -hmm. Why did you st decide to stay as opposed to not going back to your home country? So many different reasons. So well, Apart from the obvious, the yeah. beach and the food, yes. the history, yeah. Yes. So, yeah, one thing kind of led to another. So, so first of all, the, the program here at Berkeley College is just a one-year master's program. But then after that year, I was awarded, I guess, a, a post-master's fellowship. So I got into this like secondary program after the master's uh, where I was an, a, an assistant to the director, Magda Yaniku. And yeah, so I, I got to study, I got to like use Berkeley's facilities and study and have a new project, take a few classes and also like work almost full time, uh, kind of in administrative duties for the students, helping out the faculty. And then the pandemic happened and I, I decided I wanted to stay and Berkeley thankfully kept me on even another year. So Berkeley also kept <laughs> kept me around working for them a bit. And I was, I was kind of in and out, like short-term contracts with them doing administrative things. So all in all, I was tied to Berkeley for like my first three years here. Yeah, and then this, this past year, I've been enjoying and kind of like finally getting into my, my own career path. And yeah, I, I, long story short, I haven't left because I love this beautiful city. And as we talked before this conversation, the, the United States has been kind of crazy lately. And sometimes I feel like I can't afford to move back. Like it's so, it's so affordable here. The healthcare, the housing market, I, it's very comfortable and beautiful. And my parents have been supportive of, of me staying in this beautiful city. So I've just, I've kind of told myself like as long as, as long as it makes sense, as long as I'm happy and like I'm able to get that visa, why not stick around? Yeah. So what sort of things are you working on for the future then? Right now I work almost full-time freelance work for a company called Songfinch and it is a song gifting company where you ride into Songfinch and you you tell them like your whole story of a lot there's a lot of like anniversary birthday songs if you want to give a give a love song to someone or a song for for anything for that matter you there's all these like questions you answer in a form um what you want your song to be about and the genre and the vibe and all this and I and I get these orders every day and I write personalized songs for people. Yeah. <laughs> I this is I do this almost every day. I write like five to six songs a week and yeah, and like I said, the total like producing everything in my room on the computer. It's just me sitting there writing songs on my own and I turn in like finished products to the company, to the customers. But how can you write these songs so quickly? I know. That's what I thought too when I, I... So I started working with them about a year and a half ago. And I thought the same thing. The turnaround time is at about four days. They send me the order and four days time I turn in a finished product. And yeah, I thought the same thing. Like there's no way this is going to be so much work. But it's gotten easier and easier, faster. And it's a, an awesome like skill building job because you know every song I do is just another song under my belt and more experience I have producing and so yeah it gets easier and and better it's just like a, a muscle that I'm working every day I mean this is incredible so somebody if you want to send a song to somebody it's their birthday or wedding anniversary or graduation 
You fill in the form with their name and details about them, and from that information, you create a song. Yep. To yeah. me, that sounds so <laughs> difficult because you've got parameters. Whereas you're writing your own music, you can sing and write about whatever you like. And that's going to take a long time, but you seem to be able to do this quite quickly with parameters, which to me seems the wrong way around. Yeah, no, I think parameters are good. I mean, when you sit down blank slate, like you and I, let's write a song right now, the possibilities are daunting, endless. The song is written for me, you know, the whole story is written out. I just have to, like, say it poetically and make something beautiful out of it. So for me, that part that part is easier that that I'm given something to write about, and so many people will will say something in the order that's like, oh, that's the title right there, that's the hook. Yeah, I mean, just like you love hearing people's stories. Yeah, same thing for me as a songwriter. Getting getting those song orders, it's ev- every person has a different love story or or whatever kind of song they want me to write. They give it to me, and then I have what I need to work with. So. It's very fun for me. <laughs> well, my husband has just had a birthday and I'm going to challenge you for his <laughs> next one. I'll put a note in my diary to write a song about his love of cricket. <laughs> <laughs> that is specific. <laughs> but I've gotten some crazy song orders. I've written, I think, over 250 songs for them in the last year and a half. Well, I'm going to place in the order now with you, Melina. You've got a year to think about coming up with a song for cricket. Because, yeah, I mean, (laughs) you like a challenge. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) What a brilliant idea. Yeah, I mean, the company that created it, I think it's a, yeah, it's a brilliant idea. But I still cannot understand how you can do so many songs per week. Do you not feel the pressure? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yes and no. It like I said it was it was harder at first and I was just having like two or two or three songs a week. I was like there's no way I'm going to finish this. But now the I now I get so much work on a regular basis with them. It's like a 9 to 5. I yeah, sit down and get my orders for the day and I can just go for it. it yeah, it I don't know. Kind of seems like a normal a normal job now. <laughs> I, I think it's absolutely brilliant. You get your orders, you've got your home studio set up. I guess if you want to go out for breakfast, then you're going to be working at nine o'clock at night in your studio. So yeah. you can, I guess, set your own hours, so to speak. Yeah. Yes. I think Very that's nice. the coolest thing I've heard <laughs> in a long time. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an amazing company for musicians as well. I mean, this company has put Songfinch has provided me with so much work and so many other musicians as well that I don't have to have some sort of other day job being a, a barista, a waitress, something, you know, I can actually be doing music the whole day so and be making money from music, which is, you know, after getting all these degrees in music, it's like, yay, I'm paying my bills doing music so it's it for me and I've been so happy with it but if we look at it on the other side if somebody said I've had this song written for you Mm -hmm. I would be in tears before I'd even (laughs) heard the song (laughs) yeah yeah I um I think that's thankfully yeah how, how a lot of the customers feel and it's very rewarding I all the time. So the the company, I don't have direct communication with the customers, but many times they will, they, they get my name and like my socials. So they'll find me on Instagram or on my website and, and reach out to me and like, tell me things and tell me, you know, we, you know, our kids love this song. We listen to it every day on the way to school. And, you know, we, we cried and, or we played this at our wedding. I've written like first dance songs and people will tell me how happy they were. And, and that's beautiful. You know, I'm not a huge artist. I don't have a lot of listeners on Spotify. I don't get a lot of feedback on that music. So to be able to write something so personal and then hear how it affected people, it's, yeah, really gratifying. I just think this is the greatest thing ever. Can you imagine somebody, instead of buying you a sweater, I've had a song written just for you and it's going to be about something I'm into all my life or something. I mean, that is just phenomenal i want one of these i'm yeah. gonna say to my okay. husband you've got to get in touch with melania <laughs> and get this this sorted out yeah of I course mean, i'll give you the link check it out 
But for you as an artist to get feedback and say, we listened to it on the way to school with the kids in the car or it was our, our wedding song. Mm -hmm. I mean, that must touch your heart. And that's probably months after you spent the time writing the song and, and doing the music for it. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. I mean, that has got to be up there, being able to do something so personal. Let's not talk about the finances, but a well-known singer writes a song, it's a huge hit. But that's not personalised, but you are writing a song personalised to that person's life or the occasion. Mm -hmm. It's just phenomenal. Thank you. Oh my God, <laughs> that, that is just amazing. See, if we hadn't have done this podcast, Melina, I wouldn't know about this. <laughs> You've got an order from me already for my husband's birthday next year. And I'm so going to tell him about this because I want a song written for me. Yes. Oh my God, yeah, that is just brilliant. Melina, what should I ask you? Is there a question that I should ask you or some info? We're obviously going to put links to all your socials yeah, with awesome. the podcast. Is there anything... Are there any artists um, that you're inspired by or that you like to listen to or you admire? So many. Okay, my favorite artist of all time is Shania Twain. <laughs> Country pop, 90s queen, Shania Twain. Yeah, I, I kind of uh, like to say that Shania is like the reason I'm a singer. I was just obsessed with her in like kindergarten and she was the very first concert that I went to. When, yeah, around first grade, second grade. Yeah, and I remember it so vividly just like seeing Shania Twain on stage and singing along to her songs and being like, that's what I want to do as like a, a little girl in the audience being like, I want to be up there making people feel amazing like she is right now and like singing these awesome songs. Yeah, so love her. She just has a, a new documentary just came out. I still need to watch it. Yeah, other than that, it's hard to say. I just always like browsing Spotify and new artists and it's hard to say a favorite, but Shania kind of got it all started for me. <laughs> I guess the music scene has changed now because originally you had to get on one of these big labels and you know, once you get on a big label, they've got the money to, to pump into you and the production, everything. Now it's like, authors as well, you don't need, you, you can self produce on, on mm -hmm. Amazon. And I guess now you can buy your own equipment, you've got the technology, you can get your own music out there on social media, Spotify, and you can grow your audience without having the contracts that often will tie yeah. singers and artists up in knots. Yeah, absolutely. I think especially unless you're, you know, Ariana Grande or Justin Bieber, like you, unless you're at top hits up there i think they they definitely obviously need a huge team back in them but for someone someone like me like trying to you know break in and get their career started or you know other mid-level artists i think it's preferable a lot of times to be independent these days yeah for contractual reasons financial reasons as an artist because of technology and there's so many resources to be able to just do it ourselves now which is also daunting in the, in the fact that I now feel like in order to be an artist like I have to know about marketing and distribution and I have to like be my own manager and be you know so there's there's good and bad sides yeah I would hope to to build like a small team at at some point as my music career grows but if you could be given the golden ticket for absolutely anything, what would it be? What would you say, this is what I want, or that I want this person to work with, or what would be your golden ticket? Gosh. Easy question. <laughs> Hard question. <laughs> of someone to work with, or like, career goal? I don't know. I guess, well, I've been doing so much of music for, for other people lately, you know, with this song Finch thing and, and other freelance things, I am really excited to get back to, to writing my own music. I don't know. So my my golden ticket dream right now is like to start writing more of my own stuff again, to, to put out my own album. Yeah, to have my own band to go on tour someday. Yeah, get, to get back to my own music and, and find a balance between what I've been doing now and um, and writing for myself again and pursuing that more. Doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't sound too bad. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's like a golden ticket dream. It's very tangible. I just got to go do it tomorrow. <laughs> well, that's right, isn't it? I mean, I guess it's the balance of doing the music writing to pay the bills. Yeah. And then it's, 
okay, doing this stuff for me because this is my goal, this is my dream, this is what, what I want to be doing in the future. So I guess it's having that balance. Yeah, absolutely. Melina, what a conversation. <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. It really has. Understanding a little bit more about the Berkeley School of Music, understanding how you embraced the pandemic and you got all your gear and you created your own studio and the writing you're doing for other people I think is just phenomenal yeah I'll put all the links to all the socials and thank you so much for being a guest on the All About You podcast it's been an absolute pleasure thank you so much for having me I had no idea what to expect my first podcast experience but it was it was amazing thank you so much I'm glad you've enjoyed it I hope you enjoyed the conversation. Please subscribe on whatever platform you are using. It is free. And if you would like to tell your story, please contact me on allaboutyoupodcast at yahoo.com and let's tell your story.